The skipper has stepped up to the plate to break the deadlock. Okay, so Dan Z, we now understand that you're going to be uh, leaving ourselves here at Cheltenham Town. You'll be moving on to, to new new challenges. Um, how do you feel about moving the club? Yeah, I'd like to say it's, um, I just want to reiterate that it's, uh, it's a decision that I've made. Um, the, the club were very uh, strong in, in saying that they wanted me to, to stay on with the academy um, and, and keep on the role as, of, of head of coaching. Uh, so, you know, I'm very grateful for them um, and for the support they've given me, but uh, it, was, uh, it was my decision. I feel, uh, for me personally, uh, for my development as a coach, uh, I, I felt it was the right time for me to, to, to move on and to uh, pursue uh, other potential off, uh, options. So, um, sad to be leaving because I've, I've really enjoyed my time here. It's, um, you know, the club's been great with me and uh, nothing but, you know, respect for the club. But, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, it was my decision to uh, to leave and to uh, take a, a bit of a risk, I suppose, and, and uh, with, with nothing majorly uh, cemented yet, to, to, to move on and, and to look for something else and to try and, uh, uh, like I say, develop myself as a, as a coach. Um, so, yeah, that was a reason. I suppose it is a big decision because Chatham Town Football Club has had a massive impact on your career and um, you've enjoyed your time here. Yeah, I love, I love my time here. Um, you know, from being a player, moving on into a coach, it's been uh, amazing. And like I said, the support that the, the football club has given me um, from top to bottom has been fantastic. And like I say, nothing but uh, great memories and uh, great times, um, you know, at the football club. So I'm very grateful to them. And like I say, it is, it is sad uh, for me and for my family to, to, be, to be moving on. But like I say, I feel, um, you know, it, it is the time. And, I say reiterate that the, the club were quite keen to keep me on, so uh, I thank them for that. So if we look back at your, your time here at the club when it all started, um, I believe you were Gary Johnson's first summer signing, of course, in the start of the the, the uh, conference campaign. How did that move coming to Wadden Road come about? Yeah, well, I've, I've known Gary for a couple of years. <coughs> um, before I, I joined uh, Cheltenham, uh, I'd, uh, I'd played with his son Lee, um, so I knew Lee quite well, um, and uh, I'd actually had a week's trial <laughs> at Yeovil uh, before I joined Torquay, so this was about six, seven years ago. Um, at Yeovil and uh, um, Torquay ended up coming in for me at the time, and so I ended up going down to Torquay and had three years there. And then when my time at Torquay came to an end, it was literally, um, was it 3rd of May, something like that? It was like early in May, really early in May. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a phone call from uh, Gary's brother Pete, uh, the head of recruitment here at Cheltenham Town at the time. And he just said, would you be interested? I said, yeah, absolutely. He said, well, Gary Beach and talk to you. So I've come up, uh, had a day um, uh, at, the, at the training ground and met the, uh, the manager and uh, it was straightforward. We, we, both, uh, we both had the same sort of uh, feelings about getting promoted and, and the ambition that he had matched mine, definitely. And, uh, you know, it was straightforward. It was done and dusted within you know, an hour or so. So we, uh, it was... Uh, it was exciting really because I, I knew that uh, the challenge that was uh, upon us um, for the next season it was basically promotional bust and uh, it, you know it excited me so um, yeah it was done pretty good and uh, I was looking forward to it. It's nice to get something done so early in the summer usually it's <laughs> usually it's a couple of weeks of waiting and waiting and thinking all oh, this that the other but this was done busted and it was great so me and my wife could uh, could uh, go on holiday relax move up to the uh, to the area, get settled and, and you know, head into uh, pre-season with, you know, such a, a vast change of the squad. There's a photograph on that first day of that conference season of the, the squad lined up away at Lincoln City at Central Bank, all lined up doing a respect handshake. It was, of course, a brand new squad, every single player being brought in afresh, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, of course, there was that pressure to bounce back to the Football League straight away. Mm. Did the group as a whole believe that was possible? Yes, that's the strength of uh, Gary Johnson is uh, selling uh, an idea, a, a dream uh, to, to a squad. Um, and he, we were under no illusion that we had to get promoted. You know, it was when we come in, everyone knew what was expected. We had, to, and it was one of the best start. I mean, we got a couple of draws. Um, it wasn't until Southport home we finally uh, got a win, and I think it was the third game. So um, there was definitely a certain amount of pressure there, but. Um, once we got about five, six, seven games in, when we started picking up wins and, and performances were really good, uh, we, we knew it was definitely uh, 
possible. And like I said, the manager had, had, had sold that to us and made us believe. Um, and it wasn't a case of, you know, you felt under pressure and nervous. It was a case of, well, we have to do this. Let's crack on and get it done, you know. And the, the smart thing the manager did was with his recruitment, he's, he mixed the experience and leaders with some you know, inexperienced players, but very talented players at the same time. So that blend worked really well. Um, and if people remember, we had a, a really good uh, pre-season as well. So we're going into the season very confident that actually we, we, can, we can do this. Um, and so like I say, the, 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 the squad that we had, the togetherness we had, mixed, uh, add that in with the, the early results that we started to pick up, we, we, uh, we really believed it and it just took off. And, and one thing as well is the, uh, the support leader, you know, the supporters, they really got behind us and, and it's an amazing, it's amazing the turnaround because listening to ex-players um, and, and fans from the previous season, how, I'm not going to say uh, how uh, sort of stagnant it, it has got and all, all, almost despondent between the players and the supporters, for them to be open-minded, to, to literally flip their their thought process to actually really get beyond this was amazing. You know, that, that support really helped us, especially in some games where we struggled. And everyone goes, oh, we, you know, we, we, uh, we won the league comfortably and it was all easy over It wasn't. There were some very tough games that we had, to, we had to, you know, pull our socks up and pick up results from seemingly nowhere, you know, and, and that was down to a lot, was the support that we had and the belief from A, the players, which was instilled from the staff, also the supporters. And of course there were so many memorable matches in that conference campaign. There always is when you win a league, you know, days where you have put a result out of nowhere, um, you know, days where you perhaps put in a five star performance and win three or four nil. What sort of memorable matches do you remember from that particular season that you perhaps had a personal involvement in that played a big part in getting this club back in the football league? I mean, there was, there, was, there was lots of memorable games. There was, um, you know, obviously the first win at home um, when we beat Southport 3-0. That was, that was good to get us going, kick us off and, um, you know, and, and like I say, get that sort of winning mentality going. Um, for me personally, some, some memorable games was uh, uh, away at Grimsby. Um, scoring away at Grimsby was, uh, uh, and winning 1-0 because they were a big, um, promotion rival for us, uh, so to go up there, uh, their place. And the good thing was it was on a Friday night, so it's sort of on TV. It was sort of set a um, you know stamp to the rest of the, the league that you know where we're in business here. And that was I think it was October time, end of October. It was uh, uh, Halloween night, I think, or well, close to Halloween anyway. So um, so to set that early marker and, and you know to, to put a stamp on, go up to a promotion rival and win, uh, and not playing that. Very well, you know. On the night we didn't necessarily have to dig in, especially first half, because we were under the cosh, um, and you know a few big performances from some players in that night. And then, so for me personally, that was a great moment for me. Obviously, we, we scored the goal and winning one nil clean sheet, so that was really nice. Um, again, another personal one was, was Boxing Day away at Kidderminster, um, you know, because sometimes they can be banana skins. Uh, it's a local rival. We took, I think, took about twelve hundred fans, which is amazing, you know. Um, it's you know quite close uh, local rivals almost so um, that was an amazing day for me personally obviously scoring again and uh, um, winning the game and that sort of set us up for you know kept that Christmas period going because of the important time uh, the Christmas period um, and a memorable game obviously was you know, uh, Grimsby at home um, and then obviously uh, well, Grimsby at home which we feel was one of the ones that sort of clinched the title but then the uh, when we sort of Pretty much done with the Halifax um, at home. That was that was a, a, a key game and uh, you know a very memorable moment with the uh, pitch invasion and, and everyone celebrating. So no, some some really good times. So for me personally, they're the, they're the sort of key games. When you think back to that conference season, when did you think and when did you believe that the title was going to be yours? Where when it was there to get? Yeah, so I, I think um, you just reiterated there where uh, Forest Green drew away at Bromley. That, that, that's coming uh, from sort of your perspective, from from Forest Green perspective. From our perspective, uh, was the Friday night um, Grimsby at home. Uh, that was a, an unbelievable night. You know, just everything went right for us. Everything clicked. Um, you know, the, some some really good goals as well from us. Uh, again, obviously on TV, 
um, another promotion role, because Grimsley at the time, if people remember, they had a couple of games in end. So Villa lost that game. Um, then all of a sudden doubt can set in, the wheels can start to come off, Grimsby get a head of steam up and think, hang on, we can catch them here, and that, they get that belief. But for the mental, uh, mental strength from the, the boys that night to uh, go out and put on a great performance and convincingly win 3-1, um, was unbelievable. And I remember the scenes back in here in the changing rooms um, were just un unforgettable, you know. They had the, obviously we had the, the BT on in the change rooms uh, afterwards and we're all stood around the TV and they were showing the goals back and we go, hey, and the goals went in and the manager doing an interview afterwards. So it was just a, a brilliant night, you know, a really unforgettable night and one that'll live with me for a very long time. And uh, um, one of the other key matches as well was obviously the Halifax home, which all but clinched it. So then Halifax home was important that we went out and you know to go out and convincingly again uh, you know just shows the the uh, the characters and the, the change room that we had our, our really strong and uh, you know some really good blokes so yeah really good and then of course there was the, the the traditional end of season league winning lifting of the trophy here which of course took place on the pitch at Wadham Road yeah. uh, a lot of fans here to celebrate that achievement uh, you of course got to, to lift the trophy with the last up having patiently waited of course to, to join the, the, the rest of the lads on the presentation. Um, how was that as a personal feeling? All that hard work you do in a season, starting at the start of the summer, summed up on one day at the end of the campaign? Yeah, I'm amazing. Uh, you know, a, a career highlight, a dream come true. It's, uh, the boys took them in though, because I didn't play in the game, because I was injured obviously, and then they're all, when, uh, when I walked out, because I come in and got changed, and then John tearing me off, you know. <laughs> uh, it was all in, all in good jest. It was, uh, you know, it was an awkward one for me. I didn't know whether to, to go up in tracksuit or not, and um, mm -hmm. so I decided to get changed. But I didn't, you know, then photos would be up for a few years, so I didn't want to, uh, to look like I was in a tracksuit. And uh, you know, so uh, I, you know, I, I shared the moment with Carl Storer because uh, mm -hmm. he'd, uh, he was vice captain um, for the season, and then obviously when I got injured, he, he moved on to the, the captain on the field um, and, and led the team superbly. So. For me, it was a massive honour um, to be able to uh, to achieve um, uh, as, as a club to to achieve that promotion straight away, um, bounce back straight away was was a phenomenal achievement. Uh, and for me personally, to be captain of the football club when, when that happened, it really was a uh, let's say a, a dream come true and uh, a, a massive honour. And for me, uh, you know, a big personal highlight of my career. And um, I was glad to share it with with all the other boys and obviously lift the trophy with, with Stars was, was an honour as well. So we, uh, we deserved it as a club, as a team, uh, without doubt. Um, but yeah, it was a phenomenal achievement, something I'm uh, very proud of. Of course, any team that wins a division has a strong team ethic. You had a very short amount of time to build that team ethic given that the team had literally been put together in one summer. But one thing that stands out, and I think a lot of fans know this, because they had relationships themselves with the players, but particularly in this dressing room was the relationships you perhaps created with, with some of your teammates that of course I'm, I imagine are going to go on and, and be memories forever. Yeah, like I say, the, the, the players that were in this were you know, phenomenal, the, the boys in this change room were, were brilliant, um, one of the best change rooms I've been involved in. Um, like I said, the recruitment was massive, the, the manager, um, although I was club captain and team captain, it was, we had a, a lot of captains, you know, you look through um, the, the squad, the players who have, who have moved, you know, moved on now. Um, they've gone on to captain their clubs that they're at now. You know, Carl Storer and Sol Moles, uh, with with riding, you know, two real genuine leaders, you know, and, and you know, solid players you want in your team. Uh, you know, Harry Pelly's moved on to Colchester and he's vice captain there, you know, and, and captains the team when when the captain's on there. So you've got Asa Hall who's captain down at um, uh, Torquay. So you've got we had some real leaders, you know, and like I say, it was the uh, the spirit was, was phenomenal. I've, you know, we've all spoke about it. Everyone knows all about it, but really, it was a genuine spirit as well. It wasn't a false. It wasn't like our, you know, yeah, we're mates here, but then you're gone. It was none of them gone talk about it. It was none of that. It was all it was all genuine. Um, and what can't be underestimated either is is the uh, the impact that the younger boys um, had. On the squad, you know, so, you know, people like Dylan Phillips, Jack Munns, Jack Bartram, 
you know, their, uh, Billy Waters, you know, coming into uh, the environment and they've not been massive regulars where they've been before. Um, someone coming out of 21's football, someone coming out of clubs where they've not been starting in and out, you know, to come here and really perform and have massive, massive impact on that season with their performances. Uh, you know, you've got to credit them and, um, you know, we feel it was our job to, to help them and let them flourish and take on some of the responsibility out on the pitch, pitch to, to allow them to flourish as players. But in the same time, some key games, they pulled out some performances and some goals and, um, you know, in key, in key games, you know, so that, you know, they were, they were unbelievable and they helped us, you know, as well as us helping them. So, um, yeah, it was a, an unbelievable um, bunch of lads um, with some great leaders, some great talent. Um, and, you know, I, I forgot, like to say, uh, Dane Parzel as well, another captain who was a captain in York City. So, you know, another, another league. We just we were very blessed to have such a, you know, like I say, great players, great, great blokes, uh, really genuine blokes that, like I say, will hopefully stay mates for, for a long time. And, like I say, to be able to do what we did, you needed people like that. You needed people like that. And, uh, yeah, I was very, very honoured and humbled to be, uh, to be part of that. Of course, lots of positive, lots of great memories, but, you know, sometimes some less great memories, perhaps. There was the injury you picked up. Yeah. Um, in the conference season, you came back, you played in League Two after the club got promoted, but then eventually I think there was also a point where you were asked in the team photo whether you wanted to wear the red kit, whether you wanted to wear the coach's kit instead. Maybe Gary Johnson asking you know, whether you felt maybe you didn't want to be a player anymore, maybe you didn't want to move to perhaps being off the pitch. Um, eventually you did retire. Um, how do you look back on that? Was that a, a difficult thing to do? Um, oh. And you know, obviously after such great days being out on the, on the turf. Yeah, well, I mean, to start off with, like I say, the, the injury, the, the difficult times, because it was, like I say, that the, the season, the promotion season, was was full of ups and downs. You know, it really was. Um, and one of the, as the manager called it, icebergs, was, uh, was was my injury. You know, I, I played every game up to then, um, and so to, you know, it was at thirty games, twenty nine, twenty games in thirty games in something like that. Um, to get that injury was, was devastating for me, but it, you know, it was also a few of the boys were, were upset, but they just carried on and cracked on, so credit to them. But for me personally, it was quite difficult, um, you know, because obviously I've been through a few injuries before, but uh, in such a key season, you know, and, and I'd not been injured for probably three seasons leading up to that. So it was, it was uh, frustrating and annoying, but I was lucky to have a, a very good physio uh, to help me out, Gav Crow, who was uh, phenomenal. And, Sort me out and get me back fit. And like I say, we, the boys done the business for the rest of the season, got us promoted, and um, then got back in the league. And I say I was able to. I think I made my uh, my return uh, Newport away, um, and it was a tough season for us. It really was. You know, we we uh, hadn't kicked on like we would hoped, um, and it was it was tough. You know, and then uh, like I say, there was a few. That season was quite uh, difficult times, and a lot of things happened. Uh, you know, the, the manager had fallen ill, and um, <clears throat> us struggling all season. But again, the character of the, the players, we uh, we got out of it, we got uh, safe, secure, and um, you know, looked to build. And then going into the end of that season was was a few decisions to make. The uh, the manager obviously muted that he wouldn't be on part of the uh, the coaching staff, and um, I was still quite keen to. Play, uh, you know, 32 years old. I was obviously some major injuries I've had, but I still felt I had something to offer, and so I just said to the manager that I would, uh, if I couldn't be like sort of a player coach um, and help the players um, from inside the change room with with no pressure of being involved on a Saturday, you know, just trying to help them develop, give them hit tips because we were, at that time we, we brought in a couple of young lads, uh, someone like Will Boyle and. Uh, Manny Arise and uh, Rob Dickey, so we had a couple of young defenders that I thought, you know, I could help out. Um, so that was sort of the decision that we we made, I and mean, we stayed on as a player um, for that season. And like I said, I don't think I made many appearances that year, or, or more reserved games than anything. But, um, but the, you know, the manager and I both knew it was the uh, the time was coming to uh, to you know uh, to, to, to pack up and. I thought it was a good chance for me to, to, to get onto the coaching ladder, so uh, I, uh, I took that. And um, I say it's always a difficult decision, but you know it was it was 
something I've, I've, you know, once I make a decision, I, I get on with it, you know. If, if, you, if you sit and dwell and get upset and frustrated, then, you know, you, you're going to achieve nothing. So I, I was, yeah, part about the playing career and then moved on to the coaching career. And uh, like I was uh, very lucky with the, the club had stuck by myself and, and stuck by Gary's decision to, to keep me on and to take me on into, to, to develop as a, as a coach. Yeah, so you've got that introduction to coaching, you've worked as part of the first team staff and part of the academy <coughs> staff as well. Two different approaches, I suppose, in many ways to, to coaching. How have you found those early stages to what is essentially now going to be, hopefully, a, a lengthy part of the game you're going to be in for a long time? Yeah, it was, like I say, it was very difficult to, to differentiate academy, coaching, you know, 9, 10, 14 year olds to coaching first team. Um, it, was a, it was a steep learning curve for me. Um, <coughs> What I must say, I've learned loads in the last uh, 18 months uh, since I've been in the role and uh, enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, you know, it's, it's been very good. Like I say, the uh, academy staff have been absolutely fantastic with me, um, welcomed me in, and uh, they understood um, the position I was in, as in, you know, with the first team, but then obviously um, with the academy as well. Um, it was difficult at times with uh, logistically and, <laughs> and time wise, uh, time management was I've uh, learned a lot about. Um, but that no, was fantastic, a great uh, learning experience for me. I've learned so much off uh, the old manager, uh, Russell Milton, and, and definitely off the new manager as well, um, who's been brilliant with me, who's uh, allowed me um, to, to shadow him and, to, and to, to get involved with the first thing still when, uh, when Gary left, um, and to, to give me tips and pointers, and like I say, I've learned a lot uh, off of him. And, and then going into the academy, I've learned off some, some really good coaches that we've got in the uh, in the academy. Um, you know the the, uh, the full time staff. You know Anton, uh, Pete, uh, Jerry, and, and Dave uh, Palmer. They've been fantastic with me, with uh, you know giving me pointers. And I say I've, I've brought a playing career with me, but you know very much um, learning um, on the job with the, the coaching side of things. So they've been very patient, very. Um, helpful in uh, trying to, uh, uh, you know, get, let me develop and, and also very listening to what I had to, to uh, tell them as well. So, uh, no, it's been, it's been really good, um, I'll say a, a steep learning curve, but it's something I've really enjoyed and it's really given me the uh, desire and passion um, and that, tr that drive really to, to, to kick on and, and to really make something of, uh, of my coaching career because it's, it's, uh, it's definitely a passion of mine and it's, I'll say, spurred me on, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what the, uh, the future holds for And if I was to ask what's next, I suppose that very much is what you're going to be doing and, and building. Yeah, exactly. Like I say, it's, it's something that um, you know, uh, uh, I've thought long and hard about. You know, like I say, the club are, are keen to, uh, to keep me involved with the academy and in the head of coaching role. Um, the head of coaching role is, is something that I've really enjoyed and and try to sort of make me own a little bit, but I um, feel for me to develop uh, further as a, as a coach, um, potentially manager in, in years to come, uh, I feel it's not the role for me right at this present time. It's, um, I, I need to be um, coaching more, I need to be out on the grass a lot more, I need to be learning my trade and, and um, developing um, as a coach. Uh, rather than a coach educator, so uh, that was the, the decision behind it really. Um, and the uh, yeah, the uh, ambition that I have uh, as a young coach is, is quite high. So yeah, just like I say, can't thank the club enough for, for sticking by me and, and uh, support me. But it's you know it's a decision that I've made to uh, to move on. So uh, yeah, like I say, very respectful, grateful, and and, and thankful uh, for everything that the, the club has done. So your time here at the Johnny Rock Stadium is coming to an end. Um, for you, how important has the supporters been to you? How, the support you've had above from board of directors, from staff, how important has that been to Aaron Downs your time at Charlton Town? Yeah, so uh, when, when, when I was uh, asked to do this uh, from, from the club and yourself, uh, I'd say I was very grateful and the uh, um, key message I wanted to get across, the key message is really that I across from me personally was that how much, uh, what a great time I've had at this football club. Um, how lucky I've been that uh, people have just taken me on for me, um, even if I am Australian, they've, uh, <laughs> they've taken me on as one of their own, and I'm, I'm really grateful for that. Like I say, that you know, from the, uh, the ex chairman, uh, uh, Paul Baker, to the new chairman, Andy, um, I'm very grateful for, for the support that they've given me and 
um, and not say that you know to, to keep me on. It's a difficult one when a, a, a player comes to the end of his playing career, and you know a lot of the time they just get to chuck and scrappy, and you know handshake, thank you, and move on. But you know the, the manager was keen to keep me on, but he was supported by the, the uh, both chairmen and the, the board. So I'm very grateful for them for, for sticking by me and, and allowing me to move on into a, a different um, career uh, in coaching um, and, and allow me to make that transition. Um, not many players get that, so I'm very grateful. Um, to the coaching staff, um, you know, I've been fantastic. You know, obviously, I've, I've spoke about it uh, earlier on in the interview, but, um, you know, like I say, the, the old ex manager um, for believing in me and allowing me to, to move on into coaching and the new manager for, for keeping me on, um, involved in the first team um, and, like I say, not closing me out, he was involved with me and, and uh, really uh, made me feel welcome. So I'm, I'm grateful for that and for allowing me to learn from from, uh, from uh, such a good player and, and good coach. Um, and then to, like I say, the rest of the staff who have accepted me and been brilliant, um, all the way from Russell, Milton, all the way down to um, the, all the academy, everyone in the academy, uh, part-time and full-time, they've been brilliant, supported me um, throughout everything um, and accepted me and, you know, like I say, very, uh, I'm very grateful to all of them, um, and obviously uh, the supporters. You know, uh, uh, it's a genuine thank you to them because they've really um, accepted me and my, and my wife um, to the area. You know, whenever we've been out in the community, they, they've, they've been nothing but warmth um, and uh, you know, shown to, to me and my wife. So I'm very grateful and humbled uh, by that. So I really appreciate that, and I must say, um, for me personally. The support they've shown me has it, been brilliant, you know, through the good times when it's easy, um, but more importantly through the, the, the difficult times, the, the injury, the, uh, the lack of form that, that I've had um, at times, the, uh, the obviously lack of form that the team's had, you know, the, obviously it, it can be easy to turn, but for me, from a personal point of view, it's been nothing but um, support, so I, I'm, I'm very grateful for that and uh, I appreciate everything and um, I genuinely, this is from the heart, wish the club nothing but success. Uh, I wish the manager, the, the, the chairman and the whole football club nothing but success. You know, they've been brilliant to me and I, I, I genuinely hope that they push on um, and, and have a good season this year and a next year challenge um, right at the top because they deserve it to the supporters. So um, I say a genuine thank you um, from me and my family.